I might have another Juggalo joke today, but maybe I won't say it. <laughs> You're like, I just picture you all week. You're like sitting, you're sitting in some like advanced literary criticism class and they're talking about something like really deep and everyone else in the class is like drawn into the lecturer and you're like looking off into space and you're like, oh yes. And you write something down and the camera zooms over your shoulder and you see on the paper that it's like a joke about it's juggalos. Just... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought yeah. juggalos See, that's not true them. because what you're assuming is that I, I... I'm silent about it. I just raise my head and be like, um, no, that's the shoe. I mean, it's really problematic. It might be in my misogynistic play and everything, but have you thought about Juggalos? <laughs> I would like to see an all Juggalo production of any of Shakespeare's plays. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Welcome to Three Guys, Three Questions, where three friends test the limits of propriety through the questions we ask. Today is October 11th, 2014, and this is episode six of season two, and I'm Aaron L.M. Goodwin, and I'm joined as always by Andrew Savage. Say hi, Andrew. Hi. And Adam, the tool man, Anderson. Hey. That's a callback. I, like, I like that in the intro, you changed it from... Three guys test the limits to three friends. I feel like that it really it really worked. Did I my heart. say did I say three friends? Yeah, you did. Because it's so on the, you can't you can't take that on, back. On the read, it says three guys. It does, but you said friends. All right, we're friends now. I just changed it. This week we were sponsored by Water Bottles, The Changing Seasons, and drum roll, Adam's mom. Yep, that sounds like a joke, but it's actually true. It's actually. Actually, she actually is a sponsor for us. Was, she bought me this microphone, Adam, which um, if you're listening to the podcast, you can't see because that's how sound works. <laughs> you can hear but it, You can though. hear it. Yes, because that's also how sound works. <laughs> so big funny, thanks funny. to my mom. Yeah, she wanted me to mention that she just got a real estate license in Kansas City. So, so if you're looking um, for real estate in Kansas City, that's right. just Google Adam's mom. Right, or we'll, we might put up a link to it. I don't know. I'll talk to Aaron. <laughs> we'll put it put it in the show notes. All right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, Our first real advertisement went off without a hitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, follow up and feedback. The first thing um, is we wanted to talk about anagrams. So I think Adam, you added this in at first, right? Yeah, that was me. I found this wonderful website where you can just turn anything into a bunch of anagrams. It's called like the web and, anagram uh, server or something. I don't remember what it's called. I just Googled it. And uh, so I, I was wondering what kind of awesome anagrams three guys, three questions could have. And I spelled it out because threes are boring. And uh, one of my favorite is uh, sequestering three youths because that's one of the few that actually makes sense. <laughs> Um, I get to be a youth still. I know, and we're we're all. I mean, it it also kind of describes the podcast. We're all sequestered in our rooms, um, and we're youths except for Aaron, who's old. I I like squeegees, hither not yurts. I'm not sure why, but I mean, <laughs> I respect it. It's like it mentions like squeegee is a funny word. Like if you do an anagram of three guys, three questions, like over half of them have squeegee in it. Because <laughs> it's the word that you can make, <laughs> and so he just uses my, up like most of the e's. Yeah, and then and my and then, favorite one. Is, wait, I'm still describing why this is my favorite. I still really okay, gotta, done, we gotta dig into these. Um, hither, I think is just like an underused, underutilized word. You know, I uh, I like it. Hither not is not a is not a a, a phrase that you're gonna hear very often, and then. Yurts are just cool, man. They're like tents nomads live in. So, <laughs> yurts. Okay. Uh, I, mean, so I, I have actually, I have two favorites. My first one is queerness's height tryout, <laughs> which sounds like it would be like the with the three words for a the pitch for a movie that I don't want to see. <laughs> it's for. <a> movie. <laughs> Like you must be this tall to be. You must be this 
queernesses. <laughs> like, is that, yeah. like like the drag queen version of the sequel to Magic Mike? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, God. But... I don't like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so I'll move on to my next one. My uh, next I, I know it's a good joke when Aaron goes, oh my gosh, and hangs his head. <laughs> yeah, that's and it. So my next favorite one is shoe trees, quietness, hungry. <laughs> Just because those things have no common. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to link them together. <laughs> They're just words. I like, I like hugeness query theor- quitter. Hugeness theory quitter. That's what hugeness it is. is not only, quitter. yeah, not only is it a tongue twister, but it's like, oh, dude, he so he's a quitter. He gave up. He gave up on hugeness theory. <laughs> hugeness <I> is <laughs> theory. <laughs> some way, it's some guy with a surname, hugeness, <laughs> and it's his theory. Robert hugeness's theory. Of of quantum largeness. Twitter. <laughs> but what people what people don't know is that was actually what the name of our podcast was originally going to be. That was kind of interesting. No, and we ran it through an anagram finder, and we thought we saw three guys through questions. We're like, maybe that's better. <laughs> yeah, that works better. <laughs> I'm glad we stuck with what we did. The next thing on our follow up is um. We just wanted to talk about the the CW upcoming fall show, um, Swift Justice or Swift Pardon. Sorry, Swift, Swift Pardon. Pardon. Yeah, my my big question is that with that is like if we don't actually get that on the air, have we failed as a podcast? <laughs> I don't think we should put those lines in our. <laughs> I just feel in like our ability like, to accomplish. It segues that question segues into. Um, the the uh, the next thing I have on the show notes, which is I, I I had this week off, so I got into all kinds of weird things um, because I had like free time. So I was like, I wonder how how Facebook ads work. And I just gotten twenty five dollars from someone back from something that I forgot that I was missing. So I was like, you know, in my twisted way of thinking, I was like, I didn't even know I had this money. I didn't know I missed this money. So essentially, this money. If I just spend it on something, it's meaningless because I didn't even miss it. So I spent it on Facebook ads. And I put $20 worth of ads on our Swift Parton post on Facebook. And then I put $5 on our, one of our questions of the day. And the results are, like, super sad. <laughs> like, yeah. are you guys looking at this at the, at the I, photo? I saw it. <laughs> I think my roommates are watching football. <laughs> oh, that's what's going on, sports ball. All right. Um so on the on the questions of the day, we reached an audience of 2093 people. So that means that many people had it in their news feed and and then and supposedly went by it saw it, right? Mhm. We got three people out of that 2,000 plus that clicked on the photo. Zero of them liked it. Zero of them actually answered the question. So that was like $5 down the drain. <laughs> the next was our, our um, Swift Parton post where where i made it we made it seem like it was like an actual announcement from the cw I know, we had some like professional sounding ad copy for that <laughs> i know i don't know why i'm working in in tech i should be doing that um that reached six thousand four hundred and forty four individuals and it got 34 photo clicks so it's like well it's more than it's a lot more than the previous one Six people click the link, which just goes back to our podcast episode, so they're probably super disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one I don't like, get. This isn't what I wanted. This isn't a pilot episode of Swift Barton. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> we got 30 post likes, so people, 30 people were like, yeah. And we got one share, but that doesn't count because that was from me. And one page like, which was from a friend who was already doing it. They didn't do it because of this ad. Um, but it happened during the time the ad was running. Um, it's just really sad results. So if you're spending your money on Facebook ads, 
sorry, that's probably a tremendous waste of your your do you want, do you want me to make you feel a little bit more sad yeah of those 30 post likes i'm not sure how many of them were real people <laughs> <laughs> I, I i was looking through some of them and there were some so i targeted because <clears throat> you can do all these kind of weird target things and i was like i'm going to target hmm, females who are between the age of like 19 and 23 who have an interest in in Taylor Swift who live in these states or something like that you know I I feel like the demographic demographics for Swift Parton would be really really odd because it'd be like 14 year old girls and like 50 year old cougars it's, look it's a show you can watch with like your grandma or your older mom or your younger teenage sister <laughs> That's what we're selling. That doesn't, that doesn't sound like our demographic, though, Aaron. <laughs> no, I don't think... <laughs> not, not yet! Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, from previous history, I don't know personally <laughs> demographic. <laughs> um, I know my mom actually, listens, so actually, there's that demographic that we've it, got. It, yeah, in all honesty, uh, the demographics that I'm aware of, like the people I'm, I'm aware of, that I know, like, have verified they, they listen, are, like overwhelmingly female there's a couple of guys that i that i that i'm not like friends with that i know listen you know like from twitter i just see them liking posts and stuff like that um but it's mostly women um, i don't well i would like to therefore take this time to point out the fact that i am single <laughs> sure. but not for like would oh. you want to would you want to date somebody who who liked this show it depends. <laughs> <laughs> they really, they're like, I really like Aaron. Adam, do you want to date me? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that might reveal some sort of that reveals some sort of character. I don't know if I can get over. <laughs> I'm going to say yes, just because if they're listening, I want them to continue to listen. That's the reason. I should probably say nicer things about our listeners. <laughs> we have some cool people like we got like like b mort is our homie he's like pimping us on the interwebs all the time that's up b mort double dope hey dude he has he has a podcast called rebranded that you should check out they haven't done an episode in a while and they need to i feel bad because like their last episode i was like guys the sound is super bad like I sent him a message, I was like, I want to help you because I, I was like, I really like this podcast. They talk about like branding and technology and stuff. Um, and, and then they stopped and I was like, did I like discourage them or something? Like, they were like, like Aaron sent us a message cause... that said our sound was bad. Let's just never do this again. Let's I will voluntarily, like if they give me, if they, if they, if they think that's a hurdle, just if they send me their tracks, I will, <clears throat> I'll volunteer to edit it once. <clears throat> And then show them how to do it, or something. I don't know what it is because they're using some of the same, like they're using some of the same equipment as us and stuff. Yeah. See, but now with us, with this new sponsored microphone that I have, and your microphone that you bought with your own money because you're an adult, Aaron, mm -hmm. our sound sounds really great, except for Andrew's. Hey, that's <laughs> hurtful. <laughs> it's a good thing he doesn't say much. I noticed overwhelmingly like our tracks. I was looking at them when they when they I zoomed out to do the final edit and I saw like how much was me and Adam and then how much was like Savage. It, it's hard because there's like a lag on my end. So anything yeah. I say is like ten seconds after you have finished talking. So yeah, you have a lot of unfinished sentences. Because you realize, oh, they don't hear them way behind. Yeah. I, I like to imagine that Andrew's like a sniper. And he's just like laying in wait for us to say something really terrible. And then he just comes in and pew, shoots us down. <laughs> That's good. Our next follow-up, speaking of demographics and speaking of interrupting Adam or Andrew. Um, <laughs> what were you going to say, Andrew? <laughs> no, you're fine. No, no. I, we want to give you space to talk. Yeah, we're, we're, we're no, done talking. No. I don't need to have the best podcast. We're not going to talk anymore. Go on, say what you're going to say. Say it, Aaron. Say it. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Andrew, I'm giving you room to talk. All right. Andrew, are you going to say anything? Let's talk about. Let's talk about. Let's talk about our our demographics here. Um, B 
Because we got, like, a buttload of people who downloaded our podcast from the Ukraine. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. I don't know anybody in the Ukraine. As of Do today... Do you know people in the Ukraine? I No. Also, you'd think that they'd be busy with other things. <laughs> yeah, like not getting taken over by Russia or something. Yes, there's that. Maybe they're Russians. I don't know. I don't want to be... <laughs> <laughs> maybe the Russian army is just chilling in Ukraine and be like, oh yeah, this is... But you would think it's on. not them because we don't have, like, any listeners... Do we have any listeners from Russia? We don't... I don't see a single download from Russia. So... Um, well, it's because Russia is an oppressive police state and their podcast was probably banned there. <laughs> Our po- Let's go with that. Our podcast... So there's a bunch of Russians Russia. using Ukrainian proxy servers to listen oh, to our podcast. Could be. could be. You think they'd use China because it's easier... I think, right? There's there's one from Hong Kong. Um, but like six almost seven percent of our listeners come from Ukraine. I know, like like we have a bunch from the United States and the number two is Ukraine. <laughs> Super <laughs> weird. So if you're listening to this from Ukraine, um hello, um why? And send us an email. Yeah. I, I really, really want to hear from you. You can email us at three guys three questions. That's all like English words, no num- numerals. Three guys three questions at gmail.com. And if you forget that, you can just go to 3g3q.co, our website, and there's a little email icon. You can just hit it and you can send us an email. I'll also, really want- if you're not in the Ukraine, uh, same three questions. <laughs> 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 I mean, we have Australia listeners too. Like they're they're one, two, three, four. They're fifth place. So it goes United States, Ukraine, Germany, Canada, and then Australia. Um and lately I've actually I was obsessed. I was because the show finished with this um during this week break. All I did pretty much was watch this Australian TV show. Um which is I'm assuming it's like it it's for a channel out there equivalent to like our like ABC family or something like that. Cause it's kind of like made for teenagers and it's kind of cheesy, but it's like, it's like lost on ABC family. If lost was on ABC family, it's called nowhere boys. <laughs> it's like my favorite thing. It involves like magic and witchcrafts and, and getting in alternate realities. And it's just wonderful. So, shout out to our awesome. Is it, is it as nonsensical as Lost? No, it makes more sense. Like the plot and everything, it makes sense. Like, yeah. Oh, so it's not like Lost at all. So you know how Lost explanation is in spoiler alerts. If you haven't, <laughs> I mean, I don't really. You should. You have no excuse. But it, you know, Lost is like it's all a dream. Theirs oh, is yeah, not like that. Theirs is, it's all witchcraft. Then just a wizard did it. Yeah, yeah. There's a guy who's who can cast spells. He's a he's a he's a mage, and that's it. And it, but it makes sense. Like they weave it throughout the whole story. It's not like at the end, like what? Mm-hmm. It's super bad. It's not even really a good. Sh- like really, it's cheesy, and it's like, like I said, like targeted for like ABC Family kind of people. Mm-hmm. Right? Watching it. So, would you say better or worse than this show? Um, I don't know. Next, um... <laughs> I, I, uh, so I just want to wrap it up. Wrap up. You know, the point of that tangent is, um, hello Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> and and I wanted to. Oh, that was not the right dropper link. I don't know why. So nobody follow that link that I put. In the show notes, I just removed because um, it took you to pornography. Uh, there you go, Aaron. Why would you be linking? <laughs> no, I don't. I, I must have like <laughs> sure, I, sure. I used this service called Drop IO or Drop In Drop IO. You know, it's weird because I clicked on that like a couple of days ago, and that's not what it was. Oh, re- really? Hmm. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Cause, the link I put in was a picture. It was a screenshot of of um, a U- a website I wanted to buy. But when I saw all these Ukrainian listeners, and I almost like dropped fifteen dollars and bought um, you. What was it? You 
Ukraine, you, Ukraine is dot sexy. Yeah, Ukraine is dot sexy. That's almost worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I might do it. I don't know. <laughs> um, I have until this show goes live. All right. Um, it's live now, Aaron. Well, it's live now, but I can see that we have zero viewers. At that's least that's what, what it, you to see. that's what it's saying. We have zero people in the chat room, so I'm assuming we have zero viewers right now. Um, all right, let's get into questions. No, yeah. You like how I made that yes. actual question? <laughs> let's so, get into questions. <laughs> so, Andrew, you're, you're first this week. It's Andrew, Aaron, Adam. That's the order we're going in. So. Well, I'll go first then because that's the order. Um, okay. We'll start with Aaron. Cause, hey, J- Aaron, you just found out give me a hit to talk 15 minutes. What do you know enough about to talk about for an hour? Um, this was a super, I, had, I really thought about, this is like a really good question. Um, I don't, uh, TED Talks aren't like, let me go up there and tell you everything I know about X. You know what I mean? Like, let, like, let me tell you everything I know about Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And then just spouting <laughs> off facts. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch that TED talk. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, you see, seven of nine was actually wait, was seven and nine in that one? Or was that she was one? that was from Voyager, which shows what I know about Star Trek. I could not I, talk about Star Trek for an hour. I wasn't a big fan. Voyager is what made me stop watching Star Trek, like, into the, like, I don't know, like maybe the third or fourth season, I think. I just kind of was like, I don't like this show anymore. Yeah, I just skipped right to the end and never started. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Um, turns out all of our Ukrainian fans are super into Star Trek, so... Well, then... It's nice can, seeing you guys. They, they, they can tweet their Cyrillic rage at me at... <laughs> <laughs> um so if i so like a ted talk has to have like a narrative right like usually like the really good ones they go up there they kind of have like a story that that fits something it's like it's like i you know a, the human connection factor um so i think I, I was thinking about what do i know a lot about and 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 i was th- it sounds super <laughs> like egotistical maybe to say but um the background is what makes it not egotistical and it's um how to socialize with human beings like human interaction he just got done watching a week on television (laughs) (laughs) that was by choice uh so the name the name of my ted talk would be from shy to high because it's terrible, and um, and what I would talk about, like you, the, just from the title, it sounds like you'd be advocating drug use for socializing. Not H I G H, it's H I period uh, <laughs> or exclamation mark. You, you might want to clarify that <laughs> from shy. So to it's not from shy high. to cocaine addiction. Yeah. It's from shy to home. <laughs> But Shy to Hello doesn't rhyme. So. It's true. From Shy to High, because a lot of people, like people who only have known me like the past, like, you know, 10 years or whatever, um, probably didn't know that I was like super, super duper shy as a kid. Like I would never willingly approach any human being, any person, and just talk to them. Like, and I would have anxiety if a human person would come and just start talking to me like especially like a stranger or even like family members that I didn't see as often like I I would get really shy um and so the first two years like I was homeschooled so like everyone's like oh um (laughs) My siblings aren't like that, though. So, I mean, it's just, I think it's just how I was. Um, you, your siblings weren't homeschooled, or your siblings don't go, oh, they, when you explain they, were, they, they were homeschooled, but they weren't as socially awkward, I don't think. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. They can speak for themselves on that. But um, I, I, my first two years, so I was homeschooled until high school, and then I went into high school, which is like a recipe for disaster. We talked about that 
uh, the last episode or a couple episodes ago about my flannel dual dual flannel shirts um but i would i would like eat lunch alone i would sit all by myself and just eat lunch because i had no friends <laughs> Well, this got sad. <laughs> <Right> now, <or>? <laughs> 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 it was it was pretty sad um because i just didn't i don't know i just didn't know how the things worked and i didn't and that and frankly i didn't want to you know what i mean like it wasn't like i was like i wish someone would come and talk to me because like every once in a while someone would be like oh let's go let's go help out that weird kid that sits by himself like you didn't you didn't have the experience where like like you were an outcast and so everybody picked on you like people in your high school are actively trying to be nice to you and include you <laughs> i mean some people some people <laughs> picked on me like you know some people you could tell like their friends bet them five dollars that they, they couldn't they couldn't get me to come over to to talk to them or so you know but like really there wasn't a lot of getting bullied or anything like that or if there was i just didn't uh, you know, like, I, because I, because I, I honestly, like, I, I was a lot, a lot more mature, I think, than a lot of the kids, and so, like, it's like if, um, if, like, a four-year-old, like, makes fun of you, and then you're like, well, whatever, I'm just gonna drive away in my grown-up car with my grown-up driver's license and go do grown-up things, so have fun, like, it didn't bother me that much, but, um, so, then I moved to a new high school, and so, like, everything kind of changed and I got into drama into theater and started doing that kind of stuff. And that made oh, me kind of drama. <laughs> I got into all this drama. Um, that kind of made me like come out of my shell. And, and, and anyway, so I think I know a lot about what, what, you, what it takes to kind of like overcome those social anxieties and stuff. Even if you're like an introvert, you still want to, you know, when you do want to talk to people, you do want it to be like good. So I don't know, like how to overcome that. I think I have experienced that. So from shy to high. <laughs> Every time you say that, I think of drugs. <laughs> well, maybe it. that says something about you, Adam. Maybe it could be because of all the marijuana I've been smoking. That's not true. That's yeah, not even a funny joke. Smoke marijuana say that doesn't. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's because of all the marijuana I've done recently. I've been smoking <laughs> <laughs> the marijuana cigarettes I've been and, putting in my mouth and inhaling, and my marijuana pipe. It's called a bong, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, I would not be able to talk about um, marijuana for an hour. That's for sure. I think we've demonstrated that. Yeah. But I think I would be able to talk about um, literature, but like not just like literature in general, but like experiencing literature and you mean like it and how to interpret it and just like what? <laughs> you mean like cosplay, like uh, like like Jane Austen cosplay? N no, that's just that a Renaissance fair. <laughs> I don't think the Renaissance and Jane Austen were that close. <laughs> they were close enough. Um, I mean, it was only a couple hundred years different. England, same thing. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think I'd be able to talk not not necessarily about literature only, but like a meta discussion of of literature and how to experience it and how to write about it and talk about it and like rhetorical methods for creating re like literary papers. Mm -hmm. Things. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna listen to your TED talk. I probably wouldn't. Do. I don't. I'm, I'm not even. I don't even think that I'd be able to say something interesting for an hour. But I might be able to like talk about it for an hour. You you could talk about it, but you could talk about it how it applies to like people who aren't trying to be a professor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that would be interesting because I think a lot of people like, don't bring use, it to the people. They don't. Yeah. Rhetoric to the people. It's a rhetoric revolution. See, so I don't know. I, this question was hard for me because there's, there's a. I 
I think there's a lot of things I could talk about that I know enough about to talk about for an hour, but I would not be able to hold anybody's interest over the course of that time. Like as evidenced by this podcast, like I can hardly hold people's interest for more than two minutes. <laughs> I'm, su- I'm super interested. <laughs> <laughs> just let each other out. <laughs> yeah. Me and Aaron together is just like average. This is, this is why we need more, more Andrew in our podcast. Okay. Yeah, he's like he's like the missing he's like the missing cinnamon, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't understand that reference. You um, know, have you ever been to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles? You know for no. a fact I have. I know for a fact <laughs> I went with you. Is is there a cinnamon involved? <laughs> Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. The secret, I think, to Roscoe's one a secret to why it's so delicious is that they put. Like cinnamon and nutmeg, I believe it is. It's 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 like a you know like a pumpkin spice mixture into their not only their waffles, but it's the same spice mixture they put into their chicken. It's awesome. And it's so it creates there. a cohesive unit. Yeah, it's like a bridge spanning the different food categories. You got breakfast and lunch, and the I'm, bridge. I want to go. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You are Andrew. Is is that you're? We'd be bland without that mm-hmm. spice, and you need to add that spice. You'd just be the chicken. Saying is that with as much with with as much as Andrew talks right now, and as much as we talk over him, we're more like two and three quarters guys. Three questions, <laughs> which is much more <laughs> difficult to say. And I don't think we have that no name name. Look at, think of all the anagrams that can add, to come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> Two and three quarters, guys, three questions. <laughs> okay, anyway. So yeah, that's my sounds question. like a steampunk podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew just has like a, like a steam-powered mechanical arm. It's just a bunch I've, of gra- brass gears. I've got like a top hat with like a gauge on it. <laughs> and a monocle. You're like, Aaron, what are you measuring with that gauge? This gauge measures how steampunk my hat is. <laughs> See how it's at 11? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> question anyway, so I actually thought of this question a week ago, but I kind of wanted to wait until soon as possible to tell you so you couldn't overthink it oh i see i knew you do that crap you always <laughs> wait till the last minute to tell us what your question is i'll put my I question on like two weeks in advance andrew's like uh friday at like 12 p.m <laughs> for the saturday <laughs> recording yeah well i'll be on the spur of the moment but anyway so if i had 15 minutes the title of my ted talk would be sarcasm an escape route and it would just be, <laughs> <laughs> it would just be all of my skill that I learned use scar- sarcasm to escape real human contact. <laughs> <laughs> See, but here's the thing, though: if you were really good enough at sarcasm to be able to escape from things, you'd probably be able to use it to escape from giving a TED talk. <laughs> That's true too. But so, like, I don't know how much I would be able to trust you if you were actually giving the TED talk on on using sarcasm to escape. Oh, well, it's a good that. Wow. Exactly. Wow. You are into literature, aren't you? <laughs> you are, you are into literature, aren't you? I think uh, I think that's sarcasm. a good I think that's a good thing. I think sometimes people use sarcasm as like a um substitute for humor. Yeah, or or a a conversational shield that they hide behind, you know what I mean? Like it's like in a western movie like a fake boulder that you get behind and you fire shots like the, so that they can say something they want to say, but then if someone's like starts to take it along with it, oh, I'm just kidding. Like it was just sarcastic. Like they took it the wrong way. It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, or if people never say what they actually mean, so you can't pin them down on anything. It's like, ugh, so annoying. Yep. And so I'm I think I, that, but yeah. Well, I know. Well, I know. I know too. <laughs> so, but I think that. <laughs> Wow, really? Okay. <laughs> Adam, I want to fly over there and punch you. Oh, is that um, sarcastic? I can't tell. <laughs> no, but I think, I, think, I think Aaron's right, though. I think there's so many times when people use it as a way of not addressing issues, but that's not the way I like using sarcasm. I like using sarcasm <laughs> when it's like either really obvious or so subtle that people think that I'm telling the truth. <laughs> then you That's get into 
the problem with sarcasm yeah, you, you start to get up. into the, the problem where people don't know if you're you're like if you're serious or not you know what i mean yeah well i don't talk to people so that makes it really easy <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that. how do i talk to people on the internet i don't give a crap what they think about me yeah. <laughs> um I have that problem, like, people are constantly, like, misunderstanding me, and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I'm constantly, like, saying what I think, right? I mean, you guys would never accuse, you'd never be like, man, that Aaron, he just, Aaron Goodwin never, never says what he's thinking. It's just all a big secret with him. Yeah, I think people say the opposite thing. Aaron Goodwin always says exactly what he's thinking. Yeah, except for people think I'm joking when I'm not, or they think, like, I'm being sarcastic when I'm like absolutely serious or they think I'm serious when I'm really being sarcastic. It's just terrible. So what was your Ted talk about again, Aaron? (laughs) (laughs) Shy to high. (laughs) (laughs) Hashtag shy to high with the number two. Shy to not marijuana. (laughs) You can be high on other stuff. I don't know why it's like, what? It's just, because the word marijuana is like, it's like, it's hilarious because it's like, there's so many other, there's so many other terms in it. And the fact that there's a J in it, but you don't say the J. It's also (laughs) very. Marijuana. 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 All right. I think we're getting racist. Um, yeah, yeah, we're getting off track now. Okay, next question. <laughs> it is my turn for a question, and mine is: What is one of your um, irrational or unconventional fears? And so, and Adam, you're the you're on deck here. I don't think I don't think mine is unconventional. Like I, I the only one that has this fear, but it's extremely irrational. Well, it could be I'm irrational. Too. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's extremely irrational because I have I have this weird fear that all of the people who I hang out with actually find me super annoying. Anything about it? No, oh, that's <laughs> super sad, man. I know, right? I think that's- I know that's my fear too, but I know it's true, so I don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fear if it's been verified true. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not irrational if it's true, but like, I mean, my friends are blunt to other people to their faces, so why would they not be blunt to me? Like, they wouldn't hang out with me if they didn't find my like the things I said at least slightly entertaining. The worst thing about so, a fear like that is that it gets you. You, it changes your behavior to where you're trying harder, maybe. And maybe that actually pushes people away. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's so, it's it's one of those great situational ironies. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I tend to do is, like, I try to, like, a litmus test of, do they really like me? So I'll, I'll like, invite them to do things. I'm like, oh, this will see sh- if they really like me or they're just really nice people. But it's, like, it never works. So I'm just like, well, this sucks. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one ever does it. <laughs> like, yeah, no one does normal things like that. So. If anyone tries that test on me, I hate to break it to you, but I'm going to say no to everyone because I hate doing things. So Yeah, and that's the thing. Is like, <laughs> when you're, when, that's the thing about like most, like when you just internalize, like, especially like, I'm like, oh, everyone hates me. It's like, I'm the problem. But when you realize, like, no, everyone is just has problems and then you realize like okay people really don't hate me everyone's just crazy which seems like a cheap way out but i'm the one with the ted talk about sarcasm so yeah so i mean that's what i'm afraid of and it's not it's not even a funny answer it's just i'm legitimately sometimes that runs through my head like man what if these people kind of hate me and they just aren't telling me (laughs) (laughs) i would adam i would tell you if i hated you I'm, I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. I'm going to be able to weigh in on that. Okay, I'll talk about it later. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, what's your answer to this question? Well, first of all, my fears are neither irrational or unconventional. They're all well-founded. So basically what you're that. saying is that you didn't answer. <laughs> no, no, they are. So... <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to keep talking while I'm doing that. So, um, so like, my fears, 
they're not really weird, but they're like way above or way below my age. Like just recently, I got over being afraid of the dark. I was going to say scared. That's how childish I just had become saying <laughs> that sentence. So, but no, like it's like simple things. Like I don't know how to explain it, but it's like I'm afraid of still being kidnapped sometimes. It's like that's a fear. Like I have to make sure. <laughs> like I'm like this is ridiculous. I'm a grown man. I'm not even a good grown man. So I can't imagine someone wanting to like. Oh man, I'm gonna be kidnapped. Right? And yet, as you're explaining this, you still believe that's rational and conventional. It is. It is. That is not <laughs> rational. <laughs> no. Or is it conventional? It's neither those of those things. Real, those are real fears, just not for a person like me. <laughs> okay, so, okay. So what you're saying is that it's an irrational fear. <laughs> it's <laughs> rational if you were five. Yes, yeah, see? They're rational fears for someone else. For me. Right. But like they're that. irrational for you. Yes, yeah, so that's where they're irrational, but they're not irrational fears. That's so, so weird. So you actually think about, I might get kidnapped. I better tell my mom where I'm at. No, it's more like I take steps to make sure that doesn't happen. Like, the simple things like I'll look behind the backseat of my car getting in. I'm like, oh, there might be someone there. <laughs> or I make sure all the doors are locked, you know, like I live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, or, no, but anybody, anybody who's coming that far to kidnap you is not going to be stopped by a locked door. <laughs> yeah. And so I think like, Andrew, I just want to let you know, though. I just want to let you know that if you do get kidnapped, I will personally start the Kickstarter to pay your ransom. Okay. <laughs> that would be depressing to see the result of that. <laughs> I, but, I think we can get I think, me. I think we can probably get enough to pay your ransom and a little to make some money on the side. Or make some potato salad. salad. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that happened. <laughs> Okay, so that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mine is probably what every, anybody who knows me probably knows this. Um, but I have a – not only is it a fear, it is a crippling fear of – Oh, and I will testify. Of ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any bad experience with a duck when you were younger? Or no, it so – like, There's, if you were just born this way. <laughs> I think I have some sort of traumatic experience that my my brain has buried. I can't, can't remember any bad experience. Like, I just remember at one point, I used to love ducks. We'd go to the duck pond. We'd I'd feed the ducks. Duck's great. I love them. Donald Duck, one of my favorite cartoons. <laughs> then, Interesting. At, at some point, they became, like, the most terrifying thing to me that I can comprehend. Like. If I see a duck, <laughs> I like, I just can't, I, it's all I can do to keep walking. Like if I'm walking by, um, by ducks and like my friends would notice that like the conversation just stops <laughs> and, they'll, and they'll be like, Hey, what's wrong? And I'm just like cold sweat walking forward, trying not to look at the ducks. It's, it's really bad because then I have to explain this thing all the time. About because it turns out ducks are like all over the place. <laughs> I will testify that these are true things that have happened. Like I'm not, I believe you. Like I'm not a huge fan of ducks. I'm glad you believe me. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I I don't like chihuahuas. I'm not afraid of chihuahuas, but I don't like chihuahuas. They're just like these yappy little things that try to yeah. like bite your ankles. And I feel like ducks are like the chihuahuas of the sky. Yeah, yeah. And, and and the thing is, like, here's what's weird about it is, like, I know it's irrational. Like, I know if a duck came up to me, I could just, like, kick it and it just, you know what I mean? Like, it's really small. It doesn't have teeth. What, what, what harm can it do? But just, like, right now, the thought of just thinking about that and describing it to you guys, I, like, have, like, a chill going up my spine thinking about being attacked by a duck. <laughs> it freaks me out. Out and then like geese are like mega ducks, so they're like ten times like if I see a goose and if a goose is looking at me, <sighs> I can't do it, man. Can't do Aaron, it. I'm gonna send you a picture in the um in the episode six Slack chat. 
Yeah. I just want you to look at it. Okay. No, <laughs> get it out of here! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my, oh my gosh! Oh, that was like the freaking. <laughs> Does it have teeth? <laughs> it's got teeth what on its that? tongue. <laughs> oh my it's god! His eyes are looking at you. <laughs> Freaking like you see a picture on your desktop. You see a picture of the doctor doesn't do that to me, but that's freaking so scary. (laughs) I its eye was like uh, Uh, ah. That was the first thing people said. That oh my gosh, oh my gosh, so oh. You know what the great part is? You're either going to have to cut this out of the podcast or put that in the show notes. I know, and when I do it, I have to look at it because I have to get the... Oh, my gosh. (laughs) So... Uh, This is why I'm afraid that my friends secretly hate me. (laughs) Oh, well, let's move on. Something different. (laughs) Something different. Who's who's going? Is it someone else's question? Like, are you guys... I just wanted to add, like, onto this irrational fears thing. Are you guys afraid of heights at all? Yeah, I'm not afraid of heights. Like, being in an airplane or being on top of a tall building doesn't necessarily make me afraid. But I'm afraid of falling from heights. So if there's, like, a cliff or an edge, Mm -hmm. like, that I could reasonably think I could accidentally just, like, go over, scares the crap out of me. No, yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, you, like, I'm not afraid of heights normally, but I'm afraid of, like, being close to the edge of the cliff. And, like, yeah. if I'm just standing at the edge of a cliff, like, I have this, like, I'm super afraid that I'm just going to fall over and fall off the cliff. But it makes no sense. Like, I don't just, like, fall over normally. Well, see, it makes sense for me because I probably fall over normally. <laughs> like, I, I've never just been, like, standing somewhere and just, like, on pretty comfortable footing and then just, like, falling over. Like, why would that happen at the edge of a cliff? It's happened to me on rare enough occasions. That it's worth not risking. Like I see those pictures of people like we went on a hike and they're all standing on the edge of this cliff. Like I find them so unnerving. Like I can only just glance at them and then go on. It, Cause I'm like, what if you, what if like uh, there's like a, a freak earthquake and you just whoop, fall <laughs> off and you're dead. Yeah. Anyway. So I just wanted that. I add that to the irrational fears. It's good. Mm. So my question Starting with uh, Andrew to answer is, what would you want written on your tombstone? So I thought about this really in hard. That sounds terrible. Um, mm. So I, I really thought about this, and I figured by the time is I die, is that what it says? Is that what it says? Your tombstone? Yes, it should. It should. <laughs> I've been thinking I'm about this. My answer. That's it's it. I've been thinking really, about this for a long time. It's like time. a really tall or really long tombstone. Obelisk. <laughs> 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 yes. yes. <laughs> no, I changed my answer. That's it. But no, my original answer was I knew by the time that we, um, by the time I die, I'd like to we can have gifts on our on our tombstones, and the gifts I want, I just put in the Slacker chat. But for those who are listening after they were. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gift of FA from of Kirk Rock, and it was the caption high fiving a million names in her high five. And I want that on my tombstone. Tombstone <laughs> gifts are a game changer, dude. Yeah, dude, I would buy that. If you can put gifts on a tombstone, that's when we know tombstones have really become a thing. Like tombstones have entered the the twenty first century. <laughs> gifts. On them. Oh man! Well, really, really, tombstone technology really hasn't increased in the last two hundred years. <laughs> it's more than that. Like I've, I, I remember I was in St. Louis and I saw like graves from, from like the seventeen hundreds. You know, some French people in 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 St. Louis, and it's like that tombstone only looks a little bit worse than the ones that are already <laughs> coming out, and it's been here for like two hundred plus years. No, like we really need to get on the. the the tombstone like and i feel like i feel like maybe the reason is that in the tombstone industry there's not like really competition because what what are the alternatives and there's there's tombstone not a tombstone that's it so people are gonna get a tombstone then that's they're getting what you you know what i mean i feel like doesn't that just mean that there's 
that there's an open market there? I for think there is. Tombstone it's an innovation. Untapped market. And so, if venture capitalists knew what they were doing, they'd be funding some startups. Maybe our Ukrainians can get on this. Yeah, Ukrainians. So, tombstone. when I first read this question, I thought you meant the Tombstone Pizza. And like, what would you like written on? I'm like, my name and pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> I I literally There's no spent, reason you couldn't get that on your actual tombstone. <laughs> my name and pepperoni. Yeah, I mean you'll have to have somebody like take care of it and put new pepperoni on there all the time. Like Why every not? day. Uh, <laughs> I spent. I'm not gonna lie. Like I saw that question and I literally spent like half an hour sitting there. Like, how can I turn this into a pizza joke? <laughs> but I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> well, Aaron, I, Andrew's already done that, Aaron. So <laughs> sorry. So my turn. Yes. Done? Um. Uh, okay, so what I want on my tombstone is um, I just wanted to say finally got good at napping. <laughs> <laughs> because like I always struggle with napping. Like I I I want to nap. I'm super tired. I could be exhausted. I could be awake for like two days straight. And I'm like, I'm just gonna. I need to take a nap. If it's not going to bed at night. I will try to take a nap and I will sit there frustrated for half an hour and then wake up more upset than I did before I tried to take the nap. Finally beat insomnia. Oh, (laughs) finally beat insomnia. (laughs) I had insomnia for, I mean, I I think I have it because if I don't do the, the same, like if I'm not in a habit, I fall back into it and I can't sleep. Is it like an alcoholic where they're always alcoholics? Yeah. <laughs> I have insomniaism or something. It's true. Yeah, but I don't know. It was uh, finally got good at napping. Finally got think, good at napping. I think like Gravestone, because I used to hang out, me and my friends used to hang out at graveyards because we were aspiring goths, I think, or something. I don't know what. But like, we used How to hang <laughs> and I look. Does that look goth? <laughs> Failure. Gray. Gray is halfway there, and I'm wearing you gray. Mystery quitter. Oh, <laughs> we're halfway there. <laughs> oh, living on a prayer. Well, it can't be prayer. It's going to be something different because it's goth. That um, living on a prayer to living on the cure. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, this Early is really successful. Time, but... <laughs> I want to hear I want Ad, Adam. I want to hear yours because I mean, like this is your question. So this obviously, was, um, this was my question. So I came up with a couple of different answers. Oh, okay. Uh, my first one. Three guys. Three answers. Three yeah. questions. Three. Oh, there's, okay. there's three questions. There's this. I guess answers. the answers are unlimited. I never even thought about that. Yeah, we don't have a limit on that. Oh wow. I don't know. Innovation. I mean, it's not That's like we have a perspective that outlines what we're going to do. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of old newspapers um for my job <laughs> right no. for your job right right we get it no it's you cool know. it's cool if that's what you do i don't care i'm not judging you no it really is for my job all right uh so the first one i thought of was everything went almost according to plan <laughs> uh then i thought of not wait wait, wait what does it have to do with newspapers no, no, no. This is, this is the tombstone the epitaph. Well. <laughs> anyway, what, I made a weird job joke earlier. Up or what? I can't you hear what you saying. Up? I'm so quiet. I'm not, I'm not talking anymore. Okay? This is what happens. There you go. You're normal now. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's asking what your job is, why you need to read news. Oh. Oh yeah, I'm a I'm a research assistant for a professor in the church history and doctrine department. I thought you were actually an old timey stock exchange worker, and that's why. Almost the same. <laughs> you have a stock ticker, seven paper. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, I had to turn it off to record, so you, so you wouldn't hear <laughs> it. You. Otherwise, it'd be like all the time. <laughs> that was a good sound effect, by the way. That. <laughs> This that micro the new microphone's really paying off. Yeah, yeah no, I, I just I can just describe a sound effect and the microphone will make it. <laughs> pretty 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 powerful. Okay, right all right, cut you off. Go ahead. Okay, so yeah, so the first one I thought of was everything went almost according to plan, mm-hmm. and then the next one I thought of was not quite famous yet. <laughs> um, and then I thought of a spooky one, 
Or like, it's kind of like going back to what Andrew said about putting a, a, a GIF on it. Except I don't want people to be able to tell that it's like a screen or something that's changing. So like, you know that like they have like these memory metals where like you apply heat to it and it changes shape. I was wondering if I could like... Isn't that, isn't that excuse me, let me interrupt there. Isn't okay. that just metal in general? Well, I don't know. Well, like, like it, you apply like, heat and it changes shape. But like, like to a, like a specific shape. Oh, like wait. So like you, like you, you can you put it, it in front of a blow dryer and it's like, oh, now I know it's time to turn into this. That yeah. What? That's that's a, a real thing. thing. Anyway, what? I saw it on the Discovery Channel once. Okay. Wow. Gosh. So I don't know. Using some sort of magic future Modern. technology, I wanted to say something like normal, like. Oh, may he rest in peace. And then just like every once in a while, like it senses when somebody's looking at it and then just change to your next, <laughs> which would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. It could be... in the grave. I know. Right. And then, and then you I have a little of... mechanical arm that comes up. <laughs> <laughs> your next. Yeah. So that'd be amazing. Um, then I thought of, Something that, like, like completely unrelated to anything that I had done in my life. I would kind of want it to just say, gave up on his dreams. <laughs> just, like, in the, in the middle of all these, like, oh, may he rest his peace. Like, oh, he was such a great husband. And then just, like, gave up on his dreams. <laughs> like, somebody just, like, wandering around the cemetery would be just like, oh, that's sad. So I've actually looked at a lot of tombstones for for um one of my, my minors in college was... um was family history research so i i've and i've just done a lot on my own so i've like looked at a lot of tombstones and i really do feel like there's like a a dearth of like cleverness usually they're super boring yeah that's usually that's why i don't go to cemeteries very often you're yeah you're just gonna be prepared for disappointment i know it's just it's super boring it's like man these dead people don't even have anything clever to say Think of the lines of people that be trying to get in and tombstones were entertaining. <laughs> yeah, in imagine them. you could charge admission to to a to a mortuary. Laugh, like, all the laugh, tombstones were like laugh. super clever. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe we should start a grave like a uh, graveyard and just say only funny tombstones allowed. <laughs> <laughs> we need to kickstart yeah. this idea. There's so many things we need to kickstart. We need to kickstart Swift Barton. We need to kiss, kick, kickstart my Juggalo documentary. We need to kickstart this seminary thing. Can we start a Kickstarter where we start a website called Kickstarter, <laughs> where you try to raise <laughs> try to raise money to get people to make out with you? <laughs> uh, we we should probably put that on Kickstarter. Give me a second like, here. Like, <laughs> make it a, make it a website to to have it like start kicker. <laughs> yeah. A Kickstarter for Start Kicker, where you get to start kick new and interesting projects and ideas. Are you, Aaron? Are you looking at the domain name of Kickstarter um, right now? Um. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just people are like, "Hey, I just want to make out," and it's people are like, "Oh, you could pay me this much money." Okay, I want to see. You. There is a sale right now. Wait, oh, oh my gosh. I'm buying it right now. What are you buying? <laughs> just to make sure, double checking. It, <laughs> what did you just buy? It's in the cart. K I S S S T A R T E R. I spelled that right, right? Kiss starter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, where do I log in? Let me log in. Uh, that sounds like a dating web website, but just for making out. Kiss starter. Oh my gosh, guys! This is the best day of my life. <laughs> I don't even care, man. I just, I just bought. Oh no, I didn't. Okay, <laughs> come on, gonna, 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 okay. Who is this free? Yes, 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 yes. Oh. Uh, Okay, yep, 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 that's correct. Continue. Oh, hey, we need to, um... Oh, dang it. I hate how they make you fill out... Use the same card. Why do I need to fill that out again? 
Anyway, so while Aaron's... I bought... I'm, I'm essentially... I've bought KissStarter.com. <laughs> <laughs> while Aaron's doing that, my last answer for this tombstone thing is just first... First, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but like for like a comment on a YouTube board, <laughs> yeah. But on my tombstone, <laughs> first. <laughs> but how was that even like? Like <laughs> you weren't obviously the first, right? <laughs> or like, clearly, I was not would, the first person to die. You have to do it. You have to be the first person buried at that place. <laughs> no, I, I think it's funnier if I'm not. No, I think it is funny if you are. Whatever. Okay, you know what? Hey, who's the English major? You're not a comedy English major. I wrote a paper about comedy once. Was it funny? No. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. I freaking <laughs> own hisstarter.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the best day ever. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the website now. Like, what yeah, I mean, the website looks like. Is it going to look like Kickstarter, or? <laughs> I don't, I think it should just be, hey, can you just send me a picture of you, both of you send me pictures of you with puckered up lips, okay? I'd, I'd rather okay. just like, put that demonic goose on there. No. Selfie. <laughs> Selfies of you, front, front, face, just, just like this. I'll send you a Snapchat. Or no, don't send me that. a Snapchat. Send me a like a like a like a the highest quality picture you can take with your whatever device you can do it with. Um, okay. This is gonna be the best website ever. So back to cemeteries. Um, oh yeah. Oh gosh, I can't think of anything else, man. This kiss starter. <laughs> has, Maybe we should just end now then. <laughs> the best idea for anything that's ever happened. But. So, I had a question about cemeteries. Like, have you ever in your life seen a cemetery with just one funeral plot? No. They no. have to have existed, right? That's a that's a really good point. Why have we never seen a like a starter cemetery? That's well, in the for the bury people, but they bury people because it's part of their tradition. But so they have to, every like you have to dig the person up. So you like you were like when you're buried somewhere, you're like, okay, you're buried for ten years, but then we dig you up and you have to like go somewhere else or like just throw the body away. Like and and that like that makes me think too because like the like there has to have been at some point a conversation that an investor had with a realtor saying, yeah, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to purchase about 10 acres and I want to turn it into a cemetery. And like, yeah. that's, like that's just an awkward conversation to have. Well, and it's like, it's like, yeah, I'd, you know, I'd really like to, to invest in cemeteries because people are always dying. And, the, and then people the are going to stop dying. Anytime soon. Alone for, for the, for transaction has to be like, well, how many how do we know this is gonna this is gonna go off? Like, how do we know this is gonna give me some return? What what if it's a failed cemetery? What if you only get like five people and then nobody ever wants to be buried there? Like, how do you get venture capital to start a cemetery? <laughs> like, <laughs> I think the answer is that all all cemeteries have to be kickstarted. <laughs> <laughs> they have to. Then that's better than kickstarting the cemetery. What are the rewards for kickstarting? <laughs> like a free plot. <laughs> um, you like get your choice. You know what I mean. Plant a tree in your honor, something like that. A coffin. Someone that drops flowers every day at your coffin. <laughs> yeah, that's like the that's like the highest reward. Is that like? That's the like, top tier. Is that you'll never be forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> the top tier is that you'll never be forgotten. <laughs> Yeah, eternal flame or something. <laughs> the promise that we make to you. <laughs> so it's like just some really sad, lonely millionaire buys the top tier. <laughs> now I, I just remember. don't want to be forgotten. <laughs> oh well, I really oh. want to get started on that kiss starter. <laughs> I just, I just, I just saw one one of my ideas that I wrote down that I forgot to say. 
What? For my tombstone. It was the Juggalos. Wait, that's it? Yeah. Your your tombstone just says the Juggalos? No, just it's, it'll say it was the Juggalos. Oh! <laughs> no, that's was... that weird symbol that they have with the guy with the machete or something. With the machete? The, the hatchet the man holding the sleeper? Yeah. <laughs> I understand what that means, but that guy that every that has like tattooed on him, like what the what? I absolutely so, yeah. do not want that on my tombstone. <laughs> I want I want I want my tombstone to blame the juggalos for my death. <laughs> and it's gonna start like a holy war of vengeance. And if I keep making fun of juggalos like this, it's probably pretty likely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I we haven't gotten any hate mail from the juggalos, but I I. I I no, we haven't gotten any nice mail from anyone ever well, either. So. Was gonna, but I bet that's because they don't know how to use computers. <laughs> <laughs> if there was ever I needed like a version therapy for something, that would be it. It would be a, every time I did something I wasn't supposed to, the goose picture would pop up. Um, <laughs> hey, let's tell people where to. Uh, well, first let's let's also ask us questions. Like we haven't. I saw. I've been you know looked at our analytics, and we've had like several people go to our ask page, and then they not not ask us a question. Like they get there, they're like, I'll ask them a question, and then nah, just do it. <laughs> like, send I mean, us. Questions. I know it's daunting, but we could really use it. Any question you want, any question. Does, don't don't think you have to be super creative. Like even if your question is just super plain, trust us, we will make it worse we'll find a way <laughs> to ruin it <laughs> just give us your I mean, questions that's what we do with my questions most of the time so yeah <laughs> um that's at 3g3q.co slash ask so ask. then also rate us on itunes and you can do that i set up a little short link which is 3g.3q 3g3q.co maybe you should just put the links in the show notes slash rate instead of having to say them they're in the show note, but you know, like someone's listening. I like, I want to, if they have that impulse, I want to really let them get into that. So where can they find you guys? You find gentlemen. Okay. I'm at a underscore S A V on the Twitters. ASAP. ASAP. You can find me at, at that Adam kid on Twitter. And I was, I mean, no big deal, but I was just recently refuted by, uh, by common consent. So, I'm a little bit almost famous. Like, what? That's like, That's I retweeted true, you right? before. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have it as many followers as oh, by common consent. So. Okay, maybe. I used to. <laughs> um, oh, you can find me at Aaron L.M. Goodwin uh, on the Twitters. And you can find me on Ello, too. You can find all of us on Ello. Oh, yeah. Where I forgot that I was on Nothing Ello. at all is happening ever. <laughs> I was there for like three seconds, I'm like this is a thing, and then I started going doing other things. <laughs> I keep forgetting it exists because, like, it doesn't send you notifications or anything, and there's nothing to notify me of. But even if there was, there's nothing. I mean, like, there's nothing going on there. I well, there's like there's no one I want. There's no one I want to like listen to or talk to, except for you guys. <laughs> I'm <but> there. I, <laughs> but I talk to you in real life, so it's. Okay. I don't know if you tried this new app, real life. It's pretty awesome. There's no <laughs> lag. It's in Very 3D all the time. It's in 3D. HD, 3D. smell vision and Yeah, but you can't block now, anybody. You can't block anyone. Well, you can, but you probably get them. <laughs> I'm all blocked.